Liam Smith says that Kell Brook is scared of losing to him. And, you know, he's talking about how Kell Brook doesn't seem very keen on fighting him in the near future. And I have to agree, Kell Brook doesn't seem very keen. I mean, after Kell Brook's last win, he was asked about a Liam Smith fight and yeah, he didn't seem overly enthusiastic about it at all. Now, how much of that is down to the sparring sessions they had a couple years ago when Kell Brook was preparing for Gennady Golovkin? There was some very, very brief clips of that sparring footage released to the public. And you really can't read anything into that because unless you saw the full sessions, then you really don't know anything, you know? So I don't know how good Liam Smith did then um, and whether that would deter Kell Brook. I just feel like Brook knows that this could well be his last year, last two years in the, in the sport. And he can't afford any slip-ups at a lower level. No disrespect to Liam Smith, but he has fallen short at world level several times against Canelo Alvarez, uh, against Jaime Munguia more recently. Obviously, he is a former world champion himself, but when he stepped up to the, the higher tier, he was found wanting. He doesn't have a world title right now, of course. And that's what Kell Brook is looking for. He's looking for bigger names. He's looking for one of the titleists at 154 pounds. He's looking for a rematch of Errol Spence. He's looking for Manny Pacquiao. He's looking for Terence Crawford, who he's called out again recently. So given where Kell Brook is at in his career right now, I can see why he wouldn't want to face Liam Smith. Don't get it twisted. I'd like to see the fight. As a selfish boxing fan, I mean... That's the fight I'd like to see next, to be perfectly honest with you. If Kell Brook can't get any of the bigger names to give him an opportunity, then I want to see Kell Brook versus Liam Smith. But if this really is last chance saloon for Kell, then I get it. I get why he wouldn't be jumping at this fight. Now, as far as Liam Smith goes, <laughs> I don't know why. In fact, I do know why. This is really, uh, you know, me being sarcastic. Why it is that when it comes to Eddie Hearn, if he hasn't got a new signing in a mega fight after about two or three months, they start saying, and by they, I mean various members of the boxing public, they start saying that Eddie Hearn has done a terrible job and that he's ruined his career. I mean, they were saying that about Billy Joe. Billy Joe has had how many fights with Eddie Hearn now? One fight? And they were saying, oh, what's he done for Billy Joe? What a mistake it was for Billy Joe joining Eddie Hearn. Now it looks like Billy Joe's about to get the Canelo fight. <laughs> you know, Billy Joe was with Frank Warren since the start of his career. And these same people who are jumping on Eddie Hearn saying, oh, Hearn has done nothing for Billy Joe. Where were they when Frank Warren, year after year, wasn't getting Billy Joe the top names? Where were they? They were making excuses. That's what they were doing, you know. Um, but when it comes to Eddie Hearn, oh no, we, we have to jump on him immediately if he doesn't get the person a super fight within a couple months. It's ridiculous. And the same thing for, you know, Liam Smith. He's been with Eddie Hearn a relatively short amount of time, longer than Billy Joe, I believe, but still a relatively short amount of time. At the end, and at the end of the day, it doesn't matter how good a promoter is. You're not going to be able to get every fighter, you know, just as good opportunities because the landscape of each weight division is going to be different. For some fighters, you'll be able to get them great opportunities quickly, like Danny Jacobs. I mean, he signed with Eddie Hearn and he got great opportunities. He became world champion. He got the Canelo fight. It could hardly have gone any better for Danny Jacobs under Eddie Hearn. And with other fighters, it's been the same. But with Liam Smith, yeah, it's been a little bit more of a slow burn. Now, Liam Smith has always got the opportunity, as long as he hasn't signed a long-term contract with Hearn, to go elsewhere. And I encourage any fighter to shop around and don't get tied down to long-term contracts with anybody. Don't get tied down to long-term contract with Eddie Hearn, with Frank Warren, with Bob Arum, with whoever. You know, stay light on your feet. And leave yourself room to maneuver, particularly when you're in the latter stages of your career, and Liam Smith may well be. So 
Leave yourself options. If he's not happy with what's going on now with Eddie, you know, if he's uh, contractually able, then explore other options out there. But understand that every promoter has this situation with certain fighters where they can't get them the best opportunity. It doesn't mean it's, he's a bad promoter necessarily anyway. I mean, some promoters, you, you know, you look at Mick Hennessy, no disrespect to Mick, that you don't really want to be signing with that guy. <laughs> I know uh, Isaac Chamberlain recently did. He signed a multi-year deal with Mick Hennessy, which, geez, I mean, I criticized Daniel Dubois for signing a five-year extension with Frank Warren. Well, that's a genius move compared to what Isaac Chamberlain just did. And I know Isaac Chamberlain left Eddie Hearn. Cool, leave Eddie Hearn. Join Frank Warren instead. Go to America instead. Don't join Mick Hennessy. <laughs> Jeez, that's the last thing you want to be doing. Uh, maybe I'll be wrong. Maybe Mick Hennessy will build Isaac Chamberlain up to a certain level and then he'll sign back with Eddie Hearn again. <laughs> you know, Josh Warrington style. I don't know. But um, yeah, that's all I got to say really about this Liam Smith situation. Uh, trying to get the Kel Brook fight um, on the hunt for any other fights he can find out there. One of the problems with the Smith brothers as well, I should mention this. They're a fighting family. I've got nothing against them personally. No disrespect to any of them. They're all tough guys. But outside the ring, they have got absolutely zero charisma. These guys are literally like a charisma vacuum. And although your fighting ability is what's most important in terms of providing entertainment, if you're not able to sell yourself outside the ring, you're not going to attract as many people who are going to be interested to seeing you fight, you know, interested in seeing you fight in the first place. When you look at the Smith brothers, Liam, Callum, uh, Paul, uh, there's a couple others, isn't there? <laughs> yeah, they, none of them have any charisma at all. None of them are interesting characters. And that, particularly in this day and age, that's what people want. Back in the 80s, it was enough to just be a successful British fighter and people would support you. You didn't really have to have much charisma or anything like that. Um, but in this day and age, the celebrity age, celebrity age, the social media age, people want someone who can talk, someone who's a character, whether they're a villain or whether they're a hero, whether they're a comedian, you know, regardless, they want some type of character. Um, you know, some people say that AJ doesn't really have much charisma and, I, charisma, and I agree, but AJ is very successful at the very highest level. He's got a, a, a mainstream demeanor, which is palatable to people who consume mainstream media on a regular basis. I find AJ's personality very bland and weird, but a lot of people like it. They buy into the, the whole stay humble act and all that kind of business. Um, you know, it is what it is. But one thing AJ has, of course, very much on his side is women. The Smith brothers, I don't think they really have that, do they? Because Joe Gallagher was getting upset with regards to uh, Callum Smith and Eddie Hearn not doing enough to push him, saying that Callum Smith should be a pay-per-view fighter and he should be doing this, that, and the other. But is Callum Smith that marketable? He isn't. <laughs> you know, you need a bit more. You need to have some charisma, some controversy, some something around you, some humor. Just be funny. Just be a an oddball like Derek Chisora. Look, I'm not saying that the Smith brothers should start trying to be something that they're not, but I'm just explaining why it is that opportunities don't come their way as readily as they do for other fighters. It's not just because, you know, in the case of Callum Smith, he's a good fighter. Liam Smith is a good fighter. It's not just because they're in the Who Needs Him Club. Um, it's also because they don't have 
anything else to market themselves with. So anyway, I'm going to leave it there. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below about the current situation with Liam Smith and whether Kell Brook is scared of losing to him. All right, it's Hatman I'm out. Hatman merch is now available. We got t-shirts, vests, hoodies, and more. Just click the link below. Join me on Patreon. I upload a minimum of two podcasts every single week covering a wide variety of controversial topics as well as live stream Q&A sessions. Take a look on screen right now at some of the podcasts I've produced so far. For just $3 a month, the equivalent of about £2 a month, you get access to all my new podcasts and my entire back catalogue of past podcasts including my popular Confessions of a Nightclub Bouncer series. You can listen on your computer or on your smartphone or tablet by downloading the Patreon app from the Google Play Store or the App Store for free. The Patreon app also allows you to download each podcast in MP3. For less than the price of a cup of coffee, you get access to dozens of hours of exclusive content. It's easy to sign up, there's no contract, and you can cancel at any time. So come and join our community of free and critical thinkers by signing up with me here on Patreon today.